Hey everyone, as you probably already know, Intel has been one of the more disappointing stocks in the market this year. Despite the robust performance of broader semiconductor stocks worldwide, Intel has underperformed meaningfully. The stock price fell another 20% following its earnings release. It's now down more than 50% in 2024. I'll review what's going on at Intel to try and dig deeper and understand why the stock price is performing the way it is. Also, I'll dig a little deeper in the management team's latest assessment or latest strategy of cutting more than $10 billion in costs in 2025, compare that to its longer term average and see how realistic and what that would mean for Intel stock investors. So there's a lot to cover. Let's get right into it. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, so on August 1st, the company announced its investor update and the CEO had opening remarks. And it's always, always a bad sign when opening remarks start with, on second quarter, profitability was disappointing and we are accelerating actions to improve profitability and capital efficiency by more than $10 billion in 2025. And what I mean by it's always a bad sign, when you have to lead out with your cost-cutting plans, that means there wasn't much positive that went on in the quarter that you can discuss, and you're just leading right out the gate with your cost-cutting measure. And cost-cutting, it works once or twice. You can't continue cost-cutting. It's not a sustainable way to improve profitability in the long term. Investors would much rather prefer a company improve profitability in the long term by increasing revenue, keeping costs under control to be sure, but more so increasing revenue and then keeping costs flat, growing revenue and thereby creating a bigger gap between revenue and costs. Keep cutting costs, there's only so much you can go before your revenue starts to decline as well because you need those expenses to generate revenue. You need people to generate revenue. And if you keep cutting them out, there isn't going to be very much left in terms of revenue growth opportunities. This is a little different for Intel because they have invested so aggressively in the last couple of years with their new business model, the fabrication, the expansion of manufacturing capacity, etc. Now, revenue growth was in line with forecast in the latest quarter. That wasn't the bad thing. The bad thing was the outlook going forward the pessimistic outlook, much worse than investors were expecting. Now, management saying that our investments to define and drive the AI PC category would pressure margins in the near term, and they have, but their efforts are going to culminate with the introduction of the Panther Lake in second half of 2025, and this is going to be their first client CPU on Intel 18A, which is a much more performant and cost competitive process. Now, I've been talking about Intel being in position to benefit from the replacement cycle of personal computers, and it's only just gotten started in 2024. PC sales are going to be up less than double digits this year, probably mid single digits. But in 2025, they should be up much more than that. And then in 2026, much more than in 2025. The reason being is these newer AI PCs are going to drive consumer demand right at the same time that the computers that people bought in 2020, 2021 are going to enter their replacement window. Personal computers are only good for about four to six years if you're using them professionally. If you're using them casually, they can last you much longer. But if you're using them professionally, you need to update that. You need to get the newest technology. Otherwise, you're going to fall behind others that are using the newest technology, the performance difference is going to be too large to make sense to continue using that older PC. So Intel is in a great position to capitalize on that replacement cycle. All right, so now getting into the cost cutting plan. They're targeting a headcount reduction of greater than 15% by the end of 2025, with the majority of the action being completed by the end of 2024. Furthermore, operating expenses in 2025 are going to be targeted at $17.5 billion which is more than 20% below their prior estimates, and they expect further benefits in 2026 with OPEX to decline in absolute dollars yet again. However, they say that they're going to be able to continue to fund investments in growth despite these massive cost cuts. 
So I wanted to take a look at this $17.5 billion figure in context of Intel's history and see if this operating expense target is achievable. So I've pulled up Intel's operating expenses annualized over the last decade, and you'll notice that their annual operating expenses have ranged between 19 and a half billion to over 25 billion in 2023. So their goal of having 17 and a half billion of operating expenses in a year is going to be roughly $2 billion below the lowest level they've had in the last decade. So $2 billion below their lowest annual total operating expenses in the last decade. How achievable that is? I would say that's going to be extremely difficult, extremely difficult. They're going to have to achieve a level of operational efficiency that's beyond what they've been able to achieve in the last decade. So for me to estimate how likely this is that they'll get to 17 and a half billion in operating expenses, 20% below estimates, I think this is going to be a very hard goal to achieve without hurting the company's performance in terms of cutting areas or it doesn't make sense to cut. However, I think having that goal of getting down there is a good target to have. Even if you don't hit that target precisely, I think overall organizationally, it'll put the focus, it'll emphasize the focus on becoming efficient and cost effective, and it'll drive down expense. Even if let's say instead of hitting 17 and a half billion, they get down to 18.3 billion or 18.6 billion, right? It'll still be significantly below where they are today. And they are expecting meaningful revenue growth next year and the year after that and the year after that. So if they're increasing revenue and their operating expenses are also falling, you've got both sides of that equation working for you. That can drive meaningful profit expansion, which Intel desperately needs because of all of these investments, they've been losing money on the bottom line. All right, so part of the reduction in cost is going to be less capital expenditure. And one way they're doing that is they're combining with a semiconductor co-investment program with Apollo, where Apollo, a outside company, is going to invest in these manufacturing facilities that Intel is building. So instead of just Intel putting up the $20 billion to build these manufacturing facilities, Intel might put in $11 billion and Apollo puts in 10 billion. And so they co-invest in these manufacturing facilities. And of course, Apollo is gonna get something in return for making that investment, maybe a promised rate of return. Maybe they're gonna get a percentage of the revenue that it generates from that manufacturing facility. Maybe they're just gonna get a typical lease, right? Where they just get paid rent. Whatever the case might be, it turns this into a a fixed cost from Intel, right? Instead of just putting out $10 billion right now, it spreads it out. It says, okay, Apollo, you put up that $10 billion and then we'll pay you a little bit every month or every year for a very long time. So it dices up that large capital investment and spreads it out, creating a more of a monthly recurring expense rather than a one-time upfront payment, which is important for Intel because they've already put up so much money for this transition that they need to have some reduction of this capital investment. They've been really putting out tens of billions of dollars in this shift and it will help them. It'll help their balance sheet. It'll help investor confidence if they have these kinds of arrangements in place, which they do. They have this deal with Apollo. It's not the first one. They have several deals like this and they have help from the US government, which is giving Intel tens of billions of dollars to help facilitate the expansion in manufacturing. So still, Intel stock investors are disappointed from the company's latest quarterly release, disappointed that the second half of this year is not going to bring a strong recovery or as strong a recovery in revenue as investors were expecting. However, longer term, that expectation of Intel gaining market share, of Intel catching up with the latest generation technology in semiconductor manufacturing and capitalizing on this AI wave and the PC replacement cycle, all of that is still in place. It's just going to come to fruition a little bit later than expected. 
Before I let you go, let me tell you about the greatest deal on YouTube. With just a click of a button, you can get free financial analysis from a professor with decades of investing experience. So what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you again soon.